Haynes. I welcome you who have come to the United Church of Christ. Your mic's not on. It is not. I just looked over there. That's okay. You're just going to start with greetings. You're on. Greetings. I want to welcome you who have come to worship together with us on the video today. Um, wherever you are, whoever you are, you are welcome here. I am the pastor of the United, of the United Church of Christ in Nilesville, Jacoba Poppert. Um, I thank all who are assisting in our worship service today, including our virtual choir. We thank uh, Ruth and Bob Schmidt for sponsoring the radio broadcast in memory of the sister-in-law, Pat Moore, and dad, Albert Moore. Our music today is copied and screened through our licenses with one license now. Friends, we have come from many locations to this time and place. We thank you for coming to worship with us, for we have gathered to worship God, to hear a story that Jesus told, and to be led by the Holy Spirit to support one another. May God be honored and praised. I invite us to receive the peace that Christ has promised to us, a peace that um, is a gift. It is truly a gift, and one that um, we are called to accept and also called to pass on. And so I invite you to take in a deep breath and feel God's love and to know that God is among us and that God wants for each of us peace. Peace. And then I invite us now to, to put our hands together and to share that same peace with others. So I will say the peace of Christ be with you, and then would you say it back to whoever is surrounding you, or um, if it's on the video, you can do that to the video. May the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Our call to worship today comes from Isaiah 25 and Psalm 23, selected verses. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. The Lord restores my soul and leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Strong people will glorify you. You've been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. The Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a feast, a rich feast, a feast of choice wines, of select foods rich in flavor, of choice wines well refined. You set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our hymn today is Seekers of Your Heart. We invite you to sing along with the virtual choir.
procrastinated, hemmed, and pawed, and at times simply not wanted to accept your gracious invitation. We want to have the places of honor and recognition at your banquet instead of loving and accepting our neighbors at the table, giving up our seat to make room for others. Forgive us. May we listen for your invitation in a new way that breaks open our hearts so that we might fully enjoy the table. You are prepared for us. A table of wisdom and understanding, welcome and acceptance and love for all your people, all of your children. May we humbly accept the invitation you have made to us through Jesus Christ knowing that none of us are truly worthy. And yet, because of your love, we all belong and have a place at the table. Amen. I invite us to have a moment for silent personal confession. Jesus took a child and placed it among the disciples, telling them that whoever welcomed one such child welcomed him. Beloved, you are God's child. You are important. You matter. You are loved and needed and cherished. Know that your sins are forgiven, that there is nothing that can hold you back from God's love that breaks open our hearts and causes us to love with an even greater love than we can imagine. Go and share this good news, inviting others to join God's wondrous circle of friends. Amen. Today our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew once again. Uh, this is a uh, returning now to Matthew 22. This parable was again likely told to this parable was again likely told to the Pharisees and to the chief priests and elders, um, and you could understand it as hearing uh, that um, those who were invited were the, the prophets, and then later the missionaries, um, and they were. Then, uh, uh, let me back up. Okay, okay, well, let me make sure you're, as long as we're doing this. You could just move just another inch that way then. Good, that's great. Okay, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Yep. So, this is a parable from Matthew 22. It's a parable that was spoken to the, Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, the elders, and the um, chief priests. And if you'd like, you could compare this parable to um, those who, who were the prophets, and, and the prophets went to speak to the, the crowds, and, and they were killed. And then the invitation was given to the to those who were um, the, the next group of slaves, the servants, and they were also killed, and they were could be seen as the Christian missionaries. And it, some would say that the, the the ones who were extended the invitation was Israel, and we, and the leadership of Israel. And they turned away from the invitation. But I think we can also hear this text as speaking to us. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a bank wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and went away, one to his farm and another to his business, while the rest seized his, his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroying those murderers 
have a wedding robe. And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, find him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of the Lord, and God added God's blessing to it, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. Let us uh, unite our hearts and minds as we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit, and ask that God's Spirit will be among us, and that the words that I speak are faithful to the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day. Let us pray. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you coming? Children ask their parents. Their question can often be interpreted, are you going to support me? Are you going to be there? Parents also often ask the children, are you coming? Sometimes meaning, uh, get a move on it. We're waiting for you. Are you coming? Friends sometimes ask, maybe a bit impatient with someone who's running late or wanting to know if they can get together to go to the ball game or to a wedding. Are you coming? It's a familiar, common phrase. Lately when I'm invited to a wedding, six months to a year ahead of time I receive a save the date card from the bride and groom. The king in our text today has a let everyone know there will soon be a wedding. When the table was set, they, they invited, the invited received a, a courtesy reminder. Are you coming? It is time. No, they weren't coming. The feast was already cooked and the bride and groom were into their bridal clothes. So the king sent out other servants again to the same invited guests. No, they weren't coming. They had other things to do. We know how it is. No. Try to get a quick meeting together. Not everyone can drop everything. The guests did not take the invitation seriously, each going their own way. Though some of the guests upset, with the pressure being exerted by the servants, maltreated them, even killing them. The king retaliated, sending troops to kill the guests who had killed his servants. Jesus can sure tell a story, can't he? I like the parables of the mustard seed and the pearl of great price much better. They too are stories about the kingdom of God. Yes, this story about the wedding banquet is about the kingdom of heaven. The invited are called to be in relationship with the king. It's an honor to be invited, and some would say it's a big deal. Yet the guests made light of it. When those who were invited would not come, the king opened up the invitation to y'all come. Everyone is welcome, the good and the bad. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome there. Most of us like this part of the story until we realize who might be sitting next to us. Uh, we would prefer not to sit next to a known thief or even to the aunt who treated our cousins better than us. Still, it seems the, the kingdom of heaven is open to all. As the song says, all are welcome, all are welcome. We might not like some of the other guests. However, this is a rich feast, a feast of choice wines, of select foods, rich in flavor. Choice wines, well refined. Though the table is set in the presence of our enemies, our heads will be anointed with oil and cups will overflow. Are you coming? Do you want to check with your friends? Are they coming? Do you want to make
quite sure that your kids are ready to go? Do you want to bring your parents? Maybe I need to explain. When Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, he may be talking about that place we hope to land after death. But more than likely, he's talking about our relationship with him on earth. Remember, he prays, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom of heaven is more than a place. It's a, it's a dynamic thing. It happens in time. It's eternal. It's God's work and hope. Jesus inaugurates it. However, it is not yet complete. Jesus' followers are to work to bring it into a fuller reality. We're invited not to sit down, but to get up and dance, to dance with Jesus, to dance with Jesus' other followers, so that God's dream for the world will become a reality. It is an honor to receive the invitation. However, accepting this invitation means choosing to be obedient to God and working for justice and righteousness. This invitation calls us to love one another and pray for all, even our enemies. It means realizing the blessed are those who mourn, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Those who show mercy are the ones who will receive mercy. The kingdom of God has to do with extravagantly planting seeds and seeing what grows and produces a harvest. Letting the wheat and the weeds grow together until it is the day of the harvest. The kingdom of heaven is about trusting God and working with God to bring about the kingdom. Are you coming? Are you willing to accept the invitation? Because this invitation is not just for a party. We're invited into a transformed world. With our acceptance of the invitation, that means that we are willing to continue transforming the world. Here we are called. Here we want to know the Lord, live our lives to show the Lord all the love we owe our God. Until we give God's first place until we let God begin to fill us with the Holy Spirit and renew us from within. Nothing matters. Nothing's gained. Those invited to this banquet know that without God's holy presence in our lives, our lives are lived in vain. We are to be the seekers of God's heart. There was one who came to the banquet not wearing wedding clothes. This one had not prepared himself and was not working for God's reign. This one had missed what accepting the invitation meant. And so this one was thrown out into the utter darkness, separated from the reign of God. So if you come to the banquet, there are expectations. Maybe that's why so many who have been invited said they weren't coming or they made up excuses. Accepting the invitation God offers is not just about showing up. This invitation calls us to change our hearts and lives and to work with God continue the work of Jesus Christ. This invitation invites us into the kingdom of heaven to bring about the kingdom of heaven. This invitation brings us into relationship with Jesus Christ and all who he loves. Yeah, many people are invited but few are chosen. Amen.
come to a time of prayer. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we want to be in your presence and we want to be with you. It is not always easy to serve you in this world. In fact, right now it's really hard to know what you call us to do. Help us to work for peace and justice for all. Help us to show our care and concern and your care and concern in this world, for the world, and for all that you have created. Oh Lord our God, there are many who are struggling at this time. The numbers, yes, they keep rising. And among them are our friends who are testing positive. We ask you to be with them in their anxiety and fear and grant them your peace. We pray for healing and we pray that soon there will, be come, there will come a remedy to this illness. God, we are all hoping and needing a united nation and a united um, community. Help us to work together to bring about your reign here on earth. Lead us, O oh God, and show us by your Holy Spirit what we are to be about. Lord, we, we are also very aware of the many who are being displaced by uh, several storms that have come into our land, also by the fires that are in the west. Be with those who are, um, again, afraid and who may have to find new ways of um, places to work and new places to live. God, open our eyes to the needs of others. In the name of Jesus Christ, and as Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come to a time in a uh, service when we offer our gifts. I invite us to, to remember God's generosity, a generosity that comes to us in many forms. Um, you each know what God has given you to bless you. And so I invite you to, to consider your blessings and to think again, what is it that you can offer so that the reign of God comes to be about? What gifts do you have to offer? We need them all. Time, talent, and treasure. We cannot let go of any part of that three-legged stool. We need it all. To do God's work in the world. So I invite you to give your gifts, your financial gifts, your time, your talent, so that God's reign can be here. Let us pray. Dedicate our gifts. Holy and most loving God, we give you what we have. We share what is coming out of our, the abundance you have given to us. Enable us, encourage us to be generous. Help us to let go of our worries about not having enough. And to trust that you will always provide. Let your kingdom come to be on earth. We ask it. As we promise and commit ourselves to working with Jesus so that it might come to be. In Christ's name, Amen. I do want to say thank you for all your gifts. My friends, the wedding banquet is a hard parable, yet it has a word for us to remind us that. 
we are all invited, and we are all invited and expected to wear the wedding clothes, the wedding clothes of working toward the kingdom of God, working with Jesus, being in relationship with Jesus and serving the Lord our God. So go forth. Be the disciples of Jesus. Walk in his way. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you.